come in. If you have Carla, you have to go wild. We got several color blends on our fashion plate. Color blocking is all the rage these days, but of course there is a right way and an off way to do. So it could actually seem a little funny in the beginning, but when you actually put two and two together, it's actually eye-catching. I can be cheeky and office-like at the same time. This city is loud and colorful. We got our own city color blockers, but yet again, some are on the do's and others on the don'ts of the color blocking. Talking fashion, the one man, one army boss is a well-decorated fashionista. He wears everything and understands the fashion is a great component of music. Music and fashion is uh, like brought them to it, so. so it, yeah, if you're an artist, so somehow you're attached to fashion, you have to dress good. Coco Finger will wear anything that is trendy just for his fans. And of course, fashion houses also play a big part in complementing music. So Kenzo. I've sold Palazzo, Shiba. But when are you having on this? Oh, what should I say? <laughs> this is Monkey. I'm wearing Monkey. Have you ever thought of how our female celebrities look like before applying makeup? Well, don't even imagine it because some of them are pretty much different before and after the touch up. Meet Saipa Atafo, the man behind the beauty of our female celebrities. My name is again the siren. Tino Chai Chica. It's a girl Marion K. We bring you up close with celebrities giving you insight into what they do, how they do it, and why they do what they do. It's your boy Ramba Dabba. Hey yo, what's up everybody? This is your girl K Cole. I'm a show poor picture. Hey, what's up? This is Cindy Baby. Remember what come here with you and you're watching live. Program guy. the change of government won't stop a thing i've run out of fingers counting the number of models sitting up here what about the three companies that announced their plans to launch last week i say they're shortly me i'd be looking to sell at what price more much much more
Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for NTV at 1, 28th of September 2014. I hope you're enjoying your weekend ahead of Monday. My name is Solomon Serwanja, and thank you once again for joining us. Let's start this bulletin by taking a look at what's making headlines at this hour. Authorities at a refugee camp in Raqqa say at least 50 people have died of various diseases since July this year. We also discussed the number of people who cooperate with wounded in this agenda, talking about to rid uh, the world of poverty and hunger. Also coming up, the president of the UN General Assembly speaks out on poverty eradication. And residents of a patch district are forced to fetch dirty water due to an acute water shortage. to NTV at one. Now, Uganda's foreign minister and president of the UN General Assembly, Samus, he plans to marshal support for world leaders to help tackle poverty across our very own Irene Namia Lokota Kutesa at the UN General Assembly in New York. Indeed, it's obvious that Sam Kutesa is enjoying being in the role as president of the 69th session of the General Assembly. But it's not all a bed of roses. He will face and deal with a number of issues ranging from the promotion of peace globally to promote post development agenda, being driven by the United Nations with a load expected from the African community. He says he has all this planned out. But I have also um, said to strengthen the relationship between the United Nations and regional organizations like the African Union. Would help us in resolving conflicts as well as peace building. On Wednesday, Kutesa met with the U.S. President Barack Obama. They asked for their discussion. Again, in my meeting with President Obama, we discussed uh, issues of security. We discussed uh, what is going on in Ukraine. We discussed what is going on in the Middle East, particularly on ISIS. Uh, but we discussed and agreed that we should cooperate with wounded in this agenda. And as I speculate, Uganda and Africa will benefit from the prestigious things holding now. Kutesa was quick to answer. When we talk about ending poverty in the world, Uganda is included. When we talk about uh, resolving conflicts, our region is involved. Africa is one of the countries of the continents which is discussed in security. About one of the discussions are in Africa, and it is about resolution of conflicts. It's about I'm going to be this position to show these issues that affect Africa and affect Uganda and arguments at large are dealt with. Our break comes to an when President has to attend to urgent matters at the assembly presiding over the debate. At the September, Irene Namialo, NTV, at the U.S. in New York. Our very own Irene Namialo there talking from Uganda is the president of the UN General Assembly. Now, at least 50 refugees, poor children, and adults died from malaria and their diseases that recently ravaged some refugee camp in Rakai district. We have more in this report. These are the children who survived the recent outbreak of malaria and diarrhea in Sangobe refugee camp in Rakai. 40 children died in the epidemic. <laughs> Amazi manji, umuchitundu che tunimu, uh, kubanga wali furati. Nkuba wetonya, amazi gabera manji. The chairperson of the camp, Joseph Tuyachira, says most of the children who died were between the eight months and ten years. Ten adults also died. The condition 
which is home to 4,906 refugees, are appalling. The camp is congested and has few pit latrines. Water sources are filled with filth. The poor diet in the camp has left the children facing malnutrition. Many of those in the camp are Rwandese and Ugandans who were expelled from Tanzania. They have food rations supplied by humanitarian agencies. Turiachira has implored government to relocate the refugees to another area with a better terrain. Students of Mutesa Wamroi University and the Uganda Red Cross recently donated clothes and food items to the refugees. Worrying situation in the Sango Bay refugee camp. Now, severe water shortage has hit a patch district, compelling the locals to resort to fetching from unprotected wells. Civil society organizations have constructed boreholes and sensitized the people to help alleviate the crisis. decided that it would be an intelligent move to focus our efforts on just one area in order to demonstrate impact. And because of the outstanding support we've received from the district water office of the district of the patch, uh, we've been concentrating here. And so we shared our vision of universal coverage to water and sanitation. We have spent 100 million shillings for five boreholes because it's not only the boreholes, hardware, but we are also doing the software of educating the community about the uh, health, as you've seen, how to protect your water, sanitation, and also your household. It's a, it's a, a complete offer. It's just not provided. Uh. Now the Center for and Development, SEHA, is a report on the level of awareness non communicable disease among universities. The report shows 60% of the students are unaware about non communicable their causes and treatment. We embarked on establishing health universities to sensitize students at these diseases such as heart, diabetes, and hypertension are on the rise. Many of you, the young people, you do not know what causes these diseases. This is a lifestyle. The way you live your lives is you end up making yourself long term. You will not die, and tomorrow you find out the answer. It is. It will not to be shown. It's a very short break with more stories. Use white stand to buy and fragrance, and you'll have a fresh, clean day. Be like a star. Use white star. Star, no reversal. All day fresh clean. Huh? Nice moves, Floyd. <laughs> Check out the new Fanta Orange, now with an even better taste. Fly Home, brought to you by Hima Cement.
the cement from Hema because homes are built to last forever. On the next episode, for to do more on the internet that's why we bring you happy hour day and night on the next episode it's in the light though to many of you it may be a new concept or something new to your ears fish sausages i said fish sausages it's going to uh, get its flavors from the onions and the garlic into the water and all i need is the pineapple juice and yeah it's such just to finish this off beautifully, deliciously, uh, done here there for flavor. Ah, kitchen delight never gets any better. Kitchen delight. You can download movies at the lowest prices and none of us from Orange. Dial star 133 hash to buy a data bundle. Happy hour changes with Orange. Today changes with Orange. Welcome back, you're watching NTV at One. In the second episode of our series, Inside Luzika Prison, reveal how some prisoners have moved on from dejection and wallowing in self-pity to embracing education. It will take time for many Luzira prison will be their home for years or even for life. For those that have embraced this reality, it's only wise to acquire knowledge and skills while doing their time if they are by the holies. Joining school is one of the alternatives that some have taken up. Government established both new PPUs in Luzira prison to facilitate the inmates' education. In 2012, we, our performance was fair because in we had uh, four candidates, and we had one first, first, one, one first grade, two people in second, and one was in third grade. It's 11 a.m., and it's already time for this in the tree for an English. I know it conducts. I later learned from the prison's authorities that the Ministry of Education did not provide teachers. However, by teachers from our school, those in the end of school have to sit at the end of term for their exams. Susan Chigula completed her secondary education from school. Thousand was sentenced to death after murder with husband. had an O level certificate. I enrolled for my case. I had a senior five. Six from here in prison it was the best in points. Some who complete A level and remain stranded. Chigula got a school in prison to study a lot from the university. It's offered a good course, just it's not that level was for long. And I was happy because I gave myself that I could meet. Chigula is now in her third year doing a bachelor's degree for her, she is limitless. By the time I graduate, I have finished my so I intend to go to the LBC because I intend to practice here in Uganda as well. But then I also intend to master's and then after I will also go for my PhD. That's my ambition. Yeah. Chigula is supplying to help her studies. She also gets visiting lecturers to support her. Chigula says it's hard to sacrifice well sleep, do sleep, but I do sleep, you know, in the middle of the night and read my book. Susan Chigula, an inmate, key figure in Uganda's legal landscape, successfully challenged the death penalty in the Supreme Court. When I had just been brought in contact, said uh, stories of Nehemiah to death, someone, someone then, according no serial killer among them. There was no intent to murder among them. Chigula says we have her center. She will keep a community that has nothing. I operate what we are legal counseling. I 
I think what you share in court. Night school schedule. Get some time off to love. This year, I graduated with a diploma in law. Chigula's success is, however, not a reflection of her study at the prison school. Many failed to complete or end. She went to school and she's a Then she, the day she goes to court, she's convicted. Maybe she's given five days. The moment that, co that sentence comes in the completely off, she will be stressed and she'll have to jump out. Last material also remains. But be realize a brighter future who have embraced education was out of prison. Solomon Sebuanja, NTV. The third of internal prison with this hard so terrible we've been but moving on to the original battle in the series was for the Pro Championship when they defeated Kenya 83 to 71 last night at the Lugogo. The Ugandan side will need a win against Rwanda opponents if they are to advance alongside Powerhouse. Does not end here. I think we come back stronger and because after this is up, so like five other guys. The older guys, these are the last. So I think we are from one. Like you said in Kenya, we are one. So I think we'll be back more stronger next year. Next year is still This year was very, very difficult. I think we had better hearts out. This year was a win. So we didn't know. We didn't think it was going to be easy. So I think we executed everything very well and our game plan was right on point and worked for us. So I think we have to do so. In Uganda, across East Africa, we'll be giving you every day a motorbike. That is a border border, or if you want to call it that way, but it's a motorbike. And for 100 days, so be sure to SMS that number see on your screen to double six double six, and you could be one of the winners as we continue in our celebrations of NTV8. More news in our subsequent books on NTV Kusawe Mu with Patrick Mukasa and NTV Weekend Edition. From the entire team here, it's a good afternoon. Gentlemen, 
boys and girls. This is the new speed presented to you by the dislike and survivor. Follow, follow the beat, follow the beat from the studio to the street. Info with the flow, keep you shepherd in the know. Sit back, relax, enjoy the news, follow. South Africa used to be the continent's biggest economy. That's because Nigeria didn't run their accounts properly. But with a bit of magic and a few new statistics, their GDP increased to 510 billion. Africa's uncontested champions. The GDP revision is not trickery, but includes important parts of the economy, such as telecoms, banking, and Hollywood film industry. But the Nigerians seem quite surprised. Unemployment and poverty remain on the rise. The Nigerian government announced.